Hello and welcome to Hullminster Church at Home, Church Online. Thank you so much for joining us today as we worship together on this, the fifth Sunday of Lent. It marks the beginning of Passion Tide as we look really towards Holy Week and Easter, not so very far away. It's also a time where we're marking in the next few days the year since the first lockdown. And so we remember particularly at this time all those who've been really directly affected through COVID, through bereavement and loss. Let's come to God first of all in prayer as we meet this morning. Let's bring our prayers of confession, seeking God's forgiveness. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess we have failed you as did your first disciples. We ask for your mercy and your help. When we take our ease rather than watch with you, Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. When we bestow a kiss of peace, yet nurse enmity in our hearts, Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. When we strike at those who hurt us, rather than stretch out our hands to bless, Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. When we deny that we know you for fear of the world and its scorn, Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. And today's collect. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first hymn today is the great hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, on which the Prince of Glory died. Maybe you can join in or just enjoy our choir singing the hymn.
Our reading today is from John chapter 12, starting at verse 20. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Those who love their life will lose it, while those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honour the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, the voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who is truly powerful? What is real strength? This is one of the questions that the gospel wrestles within us. Here is Jesus. And he's just entered, as we'll hear more about next week, into Jerusalem, riding, as the prophets foretold, on a donkey. The sign of the entry of the Messiah into Zion, into the holy city of Jerusalem. And we're told by John that the crowds came out both to see Jesus and also to see Lazarus, who he'd raised from the dead. And the Pharisees say, what can stop him now? The world has gone after him. In the beginning of this passage we've just heard read, we have two Greeks who are looking for Jesus. And they've entered the court of the Gentiles, find one of his disciples and ask to be taken to Jesus. The first indication of this message being not just for his own people, but for the world. The world has gone after him. But what kind of king, what kind of Messiah is this? In one sense, Jesus is at the height of his power. The people are eager to see the Romans overthrown, to see the re-establishment of their earthly kingdom. But the way of Jesus 
is another way. One of the sad things I think that has happened this week in our country has been at the same time that we've cut our aid budget to developing countries, we've massively increased expenditure on our nuclear arms. It's as if we've chosen the opposite of Jesus. Worldly power over service. But Jesus lays down his life as the servant of all. He shows his strength made perfect in weakness. He lays down his life for us and says, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He laid down his life for us and he calls his disciples to do the same. Not to live for our own power, our own prestige, our own fame, but to lay down our lives in the service of one another. Pass through the gates of God's temple with thanks. Come into his courts with praise. Praise him and thank him, for the Lord is good. His devotion lasts forever and his faithfulness to one generation after another. Lord God, creator of all things, for your love for humankind, for your love for each person, for that great and mysterious opportunity of life, for the life of your spirit within us, for the gifts of your spirit. We praise and worship you through Jesus Christ. God, creator, we praise you for the earth and the wonder of its life, for the beauty of landscape and sky, for the variety of seasons, animals and plants, for their intricate independence, and for making us to be part of it all, sharing landscape affected by seasons, interconnected with the whole of nature. God, Redeemer, we praise you for Jesus Christ and the glory of your work in him, for his life in all its fullness of doing and being, for his following through of your way and will to the end, and for raising him and all who follow him, for our world and all of you that it contains, and for our life and the opportunity of living with others and with you that it offers. We praise and adore you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God of peace, you have shown us that your will for your world is that all people should live in justice and peace. You have given us a vision of hope where all humanity lives in that wholeness of life for which we have been created. We pray for your world torn apart by conflict and fear. Nations divided from one another by suspicion, aggression and greed, 
nations divided within themselves by injustice, oppression and powerlessness. We pray especially at this time for safety on our streets and that you will help us to find ways of keeping women and girls in particular, but all of us, safe from fear and violence on our streets. And as we are beginning to see signs of hope that the restrictions and illness and even death that's been caused by the pandemic are beginning to come to an end, we pray that you'll give wisdom to doctors, to nurses, to scientists, to those who are administering this wonderful vaccination that we've been give, given the opportunity to have and that very soon we will come out of this lockdown situation appreciating our freedom and the things that you've given us in a new and fresh way. You have called your church to be a sign of hope in a world without hope, a healing community in a broken world, a people of peace in a world at war with itself. Forgive our failures of the past and create us a vision of unity and hope, of love and sharing, that we might indeed be a light to the nations through Christ Jesus our peace. God of peace, you brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant. Show us the peace we should seek. Show us the peace we should try to give. Show us the peace we may keep. Show us the peace you have given us and make us what you want us to be. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the sun of peace to you. Amen. The Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. There's just a couple of notices to share with you today. Firstly, that on Tuesday, the 23rd of March, that marks exactly a year since the first lockdown. And so we're taking part in a, the National Day of Reflection where we're inviting people to remember and to pray for all who have lost a loved one through COVID. Hull Minster will be open between 11 and 6 for private prayer, for personal prayer. And at midday, Reverend Dominic Black will lead prayers in the Minster. We'll also be broadcasting an online service at midday on Tuesday. All our Easter services 
in person or online are all advertised on our website. So if you go to the Holminster website, you can find everything you need to know there. Please make sure that you book so that you can make sure you've got a seat for those services. Our final song is a song from the Iona community. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? That invitation to follow Jesus. Thank you for joining with us today is a final prayer of blessing. Christ crucified draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Mm -hmm.